screaming about being able to do. I have been working my ass off. Well, actually, I got an old man ass, so there's not much left of it anymore. Um, to try and build this to become like a sports bar, to be like a great place. You know, this is like, you know, my Bristol, Connecticut. Okay, so this is my sports studio. We had Law Nation in the house, and Law Nation's actually going to be back in a couple of weeks. So I think during the um, autograph, what? Oh, wait. I, I, I don't know if I can answer this well. Okay, let me answer it. Hold on. Can you hear me? Philip? Hey, what's up? Uh, just doing a little live stream here. What's going on? Okay, I am on live, Phil. Philip. Are you, are you on live? Yeah. Okay. I was just warning you before you say anything. <laughs> no, it's good, man. I just, uh, you know, I'm, everybody says, uh, sources say, I hear, we hear. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. No. Now, now, is this privileged information? No. I'm okay. Not saying anything that's not. Okay. I mean, you know, you, I just want people should know that that's not. Back sources aren't saying that. I mean, yeah. There's so, much, there's so much to these contracts. There's guarantees. There's guarantees on signing. There's incentives. There's you know contracts. There's extended money. Like it's way too complicated for anybody to go. Oh well. Oh, that's being greedy. Or yeah. this is the best contract. Come on, man. Well, I, you know what I always say, Phil, Phil? I always say there's always three sides to every argument. Your side, my side, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And you're never going to say anything that's going to put you into a bad light. So we've always heard that, you know, he's got a top five offer on the table or it's $33 million. You know, I, I pointed out that the Cowboys could offer me $33 million a year and say $1 guaranteed. So, you know, is it really 33 a year? So, and that's the thing about it. And the sad thing is, is I'm sure that this is normal negotiations, but the Dallas Cowboys just put their dirty laundry out there for everybody to see the skid marks. Well, it's not even their dirty laundry. It's their laundry they want people to see. Right, yeah. You know? and, but the thing that gets me is uh, when, when I first negotiated my first contract in music, yeah. I, was told, I was told by my lawyer, Anytime it says always or never, yeah, or the highest, the biggest, mm -hmm. it's it's exaggerated or don't sign it because somebody's trying to make things better than they are. Right. It, 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 why, why are you saying never or always? You know, like. But I think that most there's, people. There's, I'm there's beginning all, to. There's always a stipulation. There's always a stipulation. Right. You know what I mean? You know, I wonder. You know, everything's changed from like when you and I grew up. You know, we, when we used to go buy a car, we used to have to go to the car dealer, and you had to be able to be ready to walk away, or you were gonna get screwed. You know, you'd right. walk in, and your mind would say, you know, I got ten thousand dollars, I can buy this car, but you don't want that guy to know that's how much you got for that car. That guy is going to go ahead and say, I can sell you that thing for 15 knowing that he can sell it for 12 and be real happy. And so it's going to be back and forth, and your best you know, possibility or your best way to negotiate is at, not out of desperation where you can walk away. And see, you know, the Cowboys, of course, are trying to save face and say, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to do this, that, and that. In the end, they always cave. It, this is what doesn't make any sense to me. In the grand scheme of things, you think about if you did offer them 33, what's two or three million dollars more? You know, that's not going to be the difference of winning the Super Bowl. To go ahead and make your guy happy. My, my point about all that is. No way in the world is Dak not going to consider his teammates. No mm -hmm. way in the world are his teammates going to go against him. No, oh, they never do. He's, he's, he's always <laughs> going to consider everyone. Mm -hmm. and anybody who knows him, anybody who knows him, anybody who's ever worked with him will tell you that. that he's, he, he, you know, it's, it's, he's always considerate of the people around him. And he's, he's one of the best men you ever met. 
Now, I used to say one of the best kids, but he ain't a kid no more. That's one of the best young men you ever met. <laughs> yeah, um, I, mean, he, I have to agree with that. Don't want to know because he, he's going to tell you the truth. You know? Right. And that's why he doesn't even do interviews right now because if they ask him, he's not going to lie. He's mm-hmm. going to tell the truth. And when people ask me, I'm, I'm telling you straight. I'm his uncle, and I don't know. <laughs> right. So how do you know? Yeah. How do you know? You don't even understand the context. I've been explained to it in detail. Doesn't mean I understand it all, because there's there's, there's too many uh, too so many little little things they can do. They can back end load it. They can front end load it. They can yeah. give you a signing guarantee, and then they give you a guarantee on your contract well, well then you say guarantee what guarantee are you talking about I mean it, it's there's terms and conditions and incentives and front end back loading front end and back end loading all these other things that are way above that's why not even a master's degree athlete the mm-hmm. back is with honors with honors a, a master's degree student athlete with honors knows what the hell it is he's not negotiating yeah. Because he knows what it is, but he doesn't know how to manipulate that and work that out and find out what's best in his best interest. You know, oh, he should call Jerry. Really? <laughs> why, why? Like, are you crazy? Yeah. Well, that's actually what Jerry Jones did with D Law. It was kind of a back doorway and almost got in trouble for it, too. Yeah, that's what he likes to do because he gets you in that, that that office there. Hey, you know, let's just go. You know, here's some money for you, buddy. And here, let's just sign and say, man, we are, we're family. Yeah, and he goes through and screws people over on that stuff. That's like a prenup and calling your father in law. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's going to get done. Who's been de- he's a lawyer who deals with these things. Oh, I'm going to call him. No. Like. <laughs> It, it just doesn't make sense, you know, like, none of it does. And, and the thing that, that upsets me is about social media is you can have your opinions, you know, while you're flipping burgers, whatever, you can have your opinions about what you think about trash, Prescott, or, or whatever. I don't care about none of that. What bothers me is when you don't know what you're talking about. At oh, least be true. we get a lot of that. Yeah, my, 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 you know, when I took statistics in college, my producer said, my, my teacher walked in, my professor walked in and said, welcome to the manipulation of numbers to suit your needs, to suit your needs. Yeah. He said, that's what this class is. We're going to teach you how to manipulate numbers and statistics to suit your needs. And that's what, that's what you can do. You can do it with all of them. You can go back and forth all you want. Mm-hmm. Well, with these, con- with these contracts and all this other stuff, it's even more complicated than that. So don't, don't go talking crap about what you know. You don't know. Yay. You don't know. You know what I mean? They just Amen. don't know. <laughs> all right. I, I didn't know you were live, man. I wasn't trying to cut you <laughs> on the show. Oh, no. Everybody's actually... <laughs> Like I said, everybody's actually enjoying it and stuff here because, you know, I uh, you, you know, I think the world of you as well as Dak Prescott and everything else. And I, I just, you know, I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. I have been since the day I was born. I mean, I remember before they ever won a Super Bowl, I was a fan. So anybody that says I'm a bandwagon fan, they can pound sand. But I hate what the Cowboys always do when it comes to contracts is they always make the player to be out to be the bad guy and you know not a team player where the cowboys they will cut your ass in a heartbeat the moment you are not producing it is a cutthroat business and most people don't seem to understand that because when they say well don't pay Dak," well this money's just going back to the owners it's not like they're you know broke this is like somebody working at walmart you know he's working for seven dollars an hour and stuff and uh as opposed to the owners that are making billions. It's the same type of thing. So I'm never mad at a player getting paid for what they do because they're giving up a quality of life and, you know, their life expectancy. Well, well, we shouldn't pay them that much. We? But you got a mouse in the pocket? Who's <laughs> we? You don't, you don't work with the Cowboys for the Cowboys. Your money ain't paying for none of that. What do you mean, we? Right. I, I... I wouldn't pay him. Well, good. You're not paying him, so shut up. I wouldn't pay him. Well, that's none of your business. You don't want somebody coming in. What other business is there where they go and they tell you how much money you're supposed to make? Right. 
Well, they don't it, do that. here's the thing I say. If, if you are willing to go to your job and say, I'll take a pay cut and I'll take less money than the other guy who's doing the same job or less than me, then you have the right to tell Dak to do the same thing. But I guarantee you, none of them are planning on doing that. Yeah, well, I got something else, and then I got to let you go, man. Okay. These, these, these hoo-hahs who say, oh, well, he gets all this money on endorsements, too. Oh, that, 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 that ticks man. me off. Let me tell you something. I love my nephew. He's like my son. He's like all, all his brothers. My nephews are like my sons. I got a daughter. I don't have any boys. So my nephews are my sons to me. Uh-huh. I don't get to see him, man. I haven't since he entered the league. I get maybe two, three days tops all year long. If I'm lucky to where it's really just me and him. So add that up. In four years, that's 12 days Mm. in four years. Why? Because when it's off season, he's working. Endorsements are free. Yeah. He's working for those endorsements. Well, the minute, I tell you what. The, is Quincy Carter getting any endorsements? No. no okay, that's right, not exactly. Not Mississippi it, State. It, it, no, not no. Mississippi State and ask them how much Dak's endorsement value is worth. Right. Not Mississippi State and ask them what his value is as a brand. Mm-hmm. Go ask them what he did for their school and how much money he made them. Right. And then come back to me and talk. But that doesn't even bother me, man. What bothers me is when they say, oh, he he made that, he was going to make that money whether he was, Baker Mayfield doesn't play for the Cowboys. He's on every commercial you see. Yeah, well, so, but, 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 but here's the difference. Is, but, you know, work, but Philip, Philip, here's the difference on it, though. Think about the season that he had and didn't perform. You think he's going to get those endorsements this year? See, for me, I would rather my quarterback get paid and not have to do all these endorsements and stuff to try and keep up with the Joneses. But the reality is most people don't realize that, okay, yeah, well, he, you know, $4 million is more money than I'll probably ever make. But if he got hurt and never, you know, Cowboys wouldn't go through and say, well, here's a pension package for you. You're on your own. That's what they don't seem to understand. And when you got somebody like Charles Haley, who just had both knees replaced at 56 years of age, you got to start thinking about that. What are you going to be able to do after football? And it's not like they ain't making billions for Jerry Jones and, you know, the Cowboys and all these other owners. Look, it's not about the money, man. I mean, it is always got a little bit to do with it, but it's really not about the money. Uh Dak's got a master's degree. He's smart. He's Mm -hmm. already got some money put up. He's going to be fine. He's smart with his money. He doesn't spend it crazy. He takes care of it. He works hard. But don't sit there and tell me. Don't tell somebody from his family that those endorsements are, are, are worth that money because we don't see our nephew. We don't see our my, my grandma. My mom has Alzheimer's, man. Oh, I'm sorry to she hear hasn't that. Got to, she hasn't gotten to see him or spend time with him in years. Mm-hmm. You know, and went before it got bad. So the lady that took care of his mama while she went down with cancer, he has not been able to spend time with her because he's had to stay out there and make his money on the off season with endorsements and signings and, and appearances and everything else. So those people go straight to hell, dude. That pisses me off. You talk about endorsements. I don't care what the endorsements are. He's earning that money. And he's out there having to do that because he's not making any money and he didn't hold out. And he played for peanuts. Mm -hmm. He's earned his money, man. He's earned his money. And the rest of them, Mm -hmm. uh, your boy, uh, let's just say KM, he goes straight to hell. (laughs) Oh, wow. I heard that. Okay. You know what? You know, Philip, Philip, I hate to say it. Philip, I hate to say it, but you just made his day because he feeds on that stuff. He just loves it. He's, he's a miserable human being that feeds on the fact that he can irritate others. See, that's that's the definition of a bully. They usually have low self-esteem, and they only feel better when they try and make others feel worse. So, you know, you, you just made his day right there. Tell him to go, you know, well, got, but, but it's I all got, good. I got a couple I- I got a couple of e-bombs and a couple of press guys I'd like to see you bully. <laughs> okay, I heard that. All right, man. Thank all you. Right, Mark. Thank you for calling. I feel about, I'll, I'll catch you. All you supporters, all you, all you, you know, the dog 
Black supporters out there, even those that just aren't haters, man. Thank you guys for at least like listening and trying to understand what this life is really like, man. Um, it's jo- not very good when you have to read things that talk crap about your family, like openly like that. It's not. It's not a fun life. Right. Hey, George Glaze said to get to make sure we get you to play a tune, man, because you're really, really good with you and your band. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. All right, man. All right, brother. Have a good one, man. All right, take it easy. All right, all right later. Okay, so hello, friends. Mark Oaks here. And as always, you know, we're here and, you know, things happen all the time. Um, that was actually Philip Ebar, who is Peggy um, Prescott's brother who helped raise Dak Prescott. Um, really cool guy. He's got a band, uh, you know, does a whole lot of charity work and everything else. Is a teacher as well as a coach. And so he is, uh, you know, kind of like everybody else, kind of up here with some of the stuff. I think what happens more times than not is when you see somebody who's famous, football player, a politician, an actor, a singer, you put them up here on this pedestal and it's like they're not human. They're not a person. They're an image. They're that singer. But what we don't realize is they're people that have the same kind of issues that we all do. They all have pains and aches and, you know, fall in love, out of love, broken hearts, Family that gets hurt, you know, I mean, all of these things, you know, they, they go, it, it, sometimes they, they've had too many tacos and they're sitting on the toilet feeling really bad, if you know what I mean. But they're just like you, me, and everybody else. They're no different. That's where people come to me, you know, and, and not that I'm anywhere near anything like that, but people come, oh my God, it's like, listen, dude, I'm just, a, 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 I'm just like you. I'm the same exactly like that. And people don't seem to understand when they throw hate and all this, that, and the other and stuff, or when you see these guys on the field and they get knocked the F out, you're, yeah, man, look at that, man, he got jacked up. That's a person that's down there getting the crap beat out of them. And you shouldn't be applauding it. We should be thankful that these guys are doing this stuff for our entertainment. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's where Philip hears people out here, because I've seen some in here, you know, $40 million, that's too much. How do you know it's too much? How do you know it's too much? And, oh, that camera went.